What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl. So you guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday, of course. And uh, I'm saying, you guys, are you feeling these sunglasses? Like, do you like these shades? Okay, so first of all, I got them from gummis.com. I've already did a video for them, like, a couple of months ago. Um, so they asked me to do another one and you guys know if you watch my like fashion videos or whatever you want to call those plus size videos that I love like Rose Gal, Rose Wholesale, Gamis, like I always do videos for them but I definitely always get sunglasses like I love shades you know what I'm saying because you never know somebody might be acting kind of salty shady you got to put your shades on but these ones I really do like because they give you like this little hint of like a antique antique-ish kind of beige -ish yellow like you know scenery so they're really not shade you're not really like blocking the sun out but I really do like them a lot just because of the way they're shaped and I think like yes if I had some real glasses they would definitely look like this I really do like them plus they're totally different because they have like this um for your nose guard or you know the piece that's going to hold onto your nose it's like more or less like a pearl right here these two pieces are pearl so that's really different and on the sides the hands are actually like I mean the arms of the handles of the glasses are actually hands it's really cute these are super different so I really really do like these a lot um so definitely check out the mist um and yeah me and my daughter Nay my 15 year old daughter we do have a video coming up soon which is our fashion modeling video if that's what you want to call it modeling or just try on rather for Rose Wholesale so this time I order her some stuff you know she's 15 I order her some stuff I get tired of like changing into clothes and plus you know I have more than enough clothes and you know when you go to high school you gotta be fashion you gotta be trendy you gotta just be all of that so I definitely order her some things so she is going to be in the video with me modeling or trying them on basically and giving her thoughts so I hope you guys definitely check that out we do have like a couple of things that are identical but I got mine from one site and she got hers from another, but they're all the same. So, yes, you guys. So, anyway, so if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, then you'll definitely know that I have a new addition to the Muffin Is My Lover's family, okay? So, in case you guys have not, we are going to introduce you to Luna, okay? So, this is the new addition to my family. She is a seven-week-old miniature Yorkie, but she is mixed with miniature Doberman Pinscher. So both her parents are really tiny and this is her size at seven weeks. She was actually the runt of the litter. Her brother and her three sisters are a little bit bigger than her. Um, she looks a little bit different um, and she looks more like her dad, which is a Yorkie. Um, actually, I did get this puppy from my friend day who does Mumsy and Nay's hair um I recently went up there to get their hair done and her dog had made it made it with her sister's miniature Doberman Pinscher so I seen her I thought she was so cute so yes she came home and she's really cute and I was you know what it was so crazy that the first thing I thought was like Coco my dog who was 11 my miniature Dotson I really thought like he was gonna be like you know kind of like flaky towards her probably growl at her or not like her because he's been like that like I've had another dog prior to sugar and he just really wasn't feeling the dog however the dog was probably like four or five years old and it was a boy he did not like the boy or the male dog at all and this is the second time that I tried this with Coco. So the third time was a charm. That's when I got sugar. I got sugar a year ago, last July, from the shelter. So she's nine now. And Coco wasn't, like, nasty to her. He wasn't mean to her, but he smelled her. He sniffed her a lot. But, you know, they became really good. I'm not going to say they became good friends because I don't really know. But they're cordial to each other. They don't snarl at each other. He doesn't sniff her anymore. She don't bother with him. He don't bother with her. You know, they do what dogs do. So, you know, I really honestly thought that when I brought Luna home last night that she would, you know, sugar my girl dog would just be more, like, overprotective towards her because she's a girl. 
total opposite. Coco is the one who is overprotective. He loves her. Sugar, she's really standoffish. She seems like she's kind of scared of the dog. She does not want to be bothered. She went in her cage and was like, I'm just really not trying to be bothered. So I don't really know what it is, if she's jealous or whatever, or she just, I don't know. I have no clue, but Coco loves the puppy, and I was so surprised. So this is Luna. She's seven weeks old, and yes, I talk about you, and she's so cute, and I can't wait to see how big she really gets. So I'm going to go out today and get her a litter box and some kitty litter. And I know you guys are probably like, what? Girl, yes. Um. That's what I did with Coco. When Coco was first born, um, well, I didn't get Coco until he was six months old. You know, I litter trained him and he used the litter box. Everybody in my house thought I was crazy, but he used the litter box. So I'm going to do that with her because she really can't walk outside. I really can't put her through the backyard because she'll take off. Um, she'll fit through the thing. So I'm just going to litter train her. And being that she's going to probably be that big, it'll be fine. You know, if you're one of those litter boxes that they can go inside and you ain't even got to see anything, then that's fine. But anyway, so other than that, that is what I've been actually doing this week. I am going to honestly be doing two Real Talks. Um, when I say two Real Talks, I'm going to do Real Talk segment for today that you're seeing. And I'm going to also do one after I'm... Um, for next Wednesday and the reason is because I won't be here on um, the 18th or rather the 17th which is a Tuesday to film Real Talk because I'll still be in New York and I won't be home until that Wednesday evening so I figured I would do it now and record it and then schedule it to release so that way you know I don't want you guys to be without a Real Talk so if you guys see me in the same exact clothing just please keep in mind that I'm re <laughs> recording two videos for Real Talk today okay two videos so other than that this is still my halfway from her giving hair um nothing really new except for um i am now doing my eyebrows again you know i did let them grow back in and they grew back in really nice but the left one right here let me tell y'all last week i spent over two hours trying to fucking do this eyebrow like seriously and i know it was two hours because over two hours because i watched two full episodes of the walking dead and a little bit of the third episode okay on netflix okay and they're not 45 minutes in length on netflix without the commercial interruptions so by the time i finished the brow finally came out right and i was really happy about the shit but goddamn that evening when I took off my makeup, I had to use bacitration ointment because my brow was so red and so sore. And I've been having to use that recently. You know what? I'm trying to figure the fuck out. Why is it taking me so long to finesse this right brow? Like, this is my best brow, okay, without any makeup. The hair stay up straight. It's more fuller. This one... The hairs start a little bit further back. They definitely don't stick up straight, so I have to use something to keep them up, and it makes it even harder for me to, you know, finesse them. I, I don't even know why I just didn't leave my grown-in eyebrows alone. I mean, they're still there. They're still very full. I just really have to camouflage them because I'm really not trying to tweeze them like that um, because there are days when I don't wear makeup. But lately I have been wearing it a little bit more so because, like I said, I'm about to go to New York and I don't want to be in New York trying to get ready for this event. And they're like, where you at, April? Oh, bitch, I'm still doing my motherfucking eyebrow. Not brows because I already got the fucking left one done. I'm still trying to do this one. And by the time I get down there, the event be over. A bitch will have red brows. So I'm really not trying to, you know what I'm saying, be sitting in no hotel room taking forever to do my brows. So... That's why I've been wearing my makeup again every day because when you get out of the habit of doing shit, it starts to get a little bit more taskful. That's the right word to do it. So and I just be feeling like if I'm not wearing, if I'm not going somewhere every day, why the hell would I want to put makeup on my face all the time? Like, I hate taking it off my face at night. I just don't be feeling like taking all the makeup off, washing my face, scrubbing it. I don't like to do that whole ritual all the time. So I just don't wear makeup all the time. And I do. So I went to the weight doctor Friday because like I told you guys, I go on Fridays. So now I weigh, that's my daughter Nay. I now weigh 206, okay? So, when I went to the weight doctor on Friday, they was like, oh, you lost six pounds in a week, which I was really happy about, but I knew I didn't lose six pounds. It was actually four 
because of the less clothing that I had on this time. Because let me tell y'all something. I get on a scale here. I'm butt-ass naked. A bitch is trying to see the real deal. Like, I'm not trying to have no wig on. I ain't trying to have nothing on but what I was born with, okay? So the wig ain't on, and I'm just butt naked. If I could take my own hair off for a second just to put it to the side to weigh myself, then a bitch would do that. But since I ain't got that motherfucking option, listen, I'm standing on that digital scale butt naked. And I know, you guys, I did go out and get a new battery, okay? So now she is telling the truth. Like, she, I mean, listen, I mean, maybe in a couple weeks she will be saying 197. But for right now, she's saying 206. So last Friday when I went to the weight doctor... I'm like, you know what? I'm not about to wear any jeans. I'm damn sure not about to put on that full wig that I had on. And I'm just going to have on less clothing, not so heavy. Because they tried to tell me I weighed one thing, but I knew that morning that I weighed less than that because I was on a scale naked. You know what I'm saying? So when I, when I woke up that morning, I was 211. When I went to the doctors, I was 213 because of the clothing. So what did a bitch do? I had on this shirt right here, okay? This fucking shirt and some leggings and this half wig, okay? And I weighed exactly the same amount when I left the fucking house as I did when I went to the weight doctor. So, I'm saying, make sure when y'all go to get weighed, y'all wear as little as possible. If the bitch can let you take your, all your clothes off, okay, and just stand it in your panties and bras, then do that too. But I'm saying. So, I have been going to the weight doctor. I have lost, I'm now 206, from 217 two weeks ago, a little bit over two weeks ago, to 206, okay? And I still do take the medication that I've been prescribed, but you know what I'm saying? It hasn't bothered me. Um, it really, you know what I'm saying? It really hasn't bothered me at all. Um, and I get the B12 shots and I've been walking. Girl, why? Yesterday I walked four and a half fucking miles. I didn't even realize I walked that far, me and Sugar. I was walking with a friend and I was introduced to, to this young lady through Mumsy. Mumsy always hooking me up with friends. That's how I got my bestie, Rebecca. That's how we became best friends because Rebecca's daughter is Mumsy's best friend. Well, you know, they moved to L.A., so I'm going to see them in a couple weeks. But um, Mumsy met a new friend. Her name is Raven, and they actually live right, like, in the same housing, like, in the same, like, community as me. And she went to her birthday party, and her mom is, like, real cool. So we have a lot in common, but she asked me, could she keep me company? would I mind any company Saturday Sunday excuse me so we met up like halfway because we live in the same community and we just was walking and I had already did a mile so you know what I'm saying four and a half miles let me tell y'all and then I got up today and did walk into a bitch legs is tired okay I'm motherfucking tired all right simply tired so let's get into this real talk this is um these are just my opinions you guys don't have to take them for take them for what it's worth to you a lot of these situations that i have been dealt with um in my own real life i try to use them as best as i can to help somebody else in their real talk situation so that they can avoid going through the same dumb shit that i have went through so that is basically, you know what I'm saying, why I like to do real talk. I could relate to certain situations. And some things I might not have been through, but I can still kind of relate because it might be similar. Or it's just like, you know what I'm saying, girl, I could feel you. I feel where you're coming from. So, if you have a real talk situation that you would like me to read on Real Talk Wednesdays, you can definitely send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. And please put in the subject line, Real Talk. And also, if you would like to change the names of the people in your email, you can go ho go ahead and do so and just let me know, like, hey, April, I changed the names. If you don't tell me that you changed the names, I'm just going to assume that you've already done so. And if you haven't made any names, I'm going to just make up some ones for you guys. So on that note, let's get into Real Talk, you guys. Huh? 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 What? Okay, so this real talk, I actually got this last Tuesday, like, actually right after I finished editing Real Talk for Wednesday. And I really wish I had gotten the email much sooner, like, earlier in the day. 
because I would have loved to include it in last week's but being that I didn't I did email this young man back and let him know I'm definitely going to be posting your email in this one here because this is actually a response um, email to the one that I did two weeks ago the young lady who, who had, had written me a couple of weeks ago her name was Denise and um, that's what she called herself in the email. Her name was Denise. And um, basically, she was engaged to this guy. And they had been together for quite some time here. And um, they had been together for quite some time. Now, his name is Javon, Javon, Javon. Now, they were together. They had been together for two years. And he had proposed to her last year. So just to keep a long story short, she had realized that Javon's friends were in like group messages with him and they were always talking and speaking or speaking upon Denise's weight. You know All right what I'm guys, saying? so this portion right here is a recap from two weeks ago, Denise's email. I have changed the name so you can just read on. My name is Denise and I recently got engaged to the love of my life, Javon. We have been together for two years now, and last year he proposed to me on my birthday, which is also the day that we met each other two years ago. Let's move past that. I have struggled with my weight since I was the age of 12, and since giving birth to my son, I have gained an extra 30 pounds. But lately, I have been very insecure, and my confidence is much less than what it used to be. And it has nothing to do with my fiancé, but everything to do with his friends. I recently read a few texts from his best friends, who he looks up to as a brother, and they were having a conversation about their previous ex-girlfriends and his best friend mentioned to him that I didn't fit in his type of, of woman meaning my fiance type of woman meaning what his best friend also mentioned in the text about how my fiance has never dated a plus-sized woman like myself and that he should suggest the idea of me to start detoxing and working out so that I can lose weight this is not the first time this has happened I have seen my many similar texts in his phone with his friends mentioning the same things whenever him and his friends were chatting in group text. I have seen him reply back telling the numerous times that my weight doesn't change the way that he loves me and I have also mentioned to him myself about my insecurities with my weight and he has always says to me baby whatever you want me to do with you so that we can work on this and make you happy again then I'm all for it. Maybe I am just tripping. I thought it was bad enough that I was already beating myself up about my weight but here it is. I have his friends judging me as if they actually know my struggle. I feel like he wants to tell me exactly what his friend has mentioned, but instead of flat out telling me that, he may just be waiting for me to become interesting in doing so. So, for the past seven weeks, I have been exercising with my trainer and detoxing, but my fiancé put a stop to me exercising with my trainer two days ago after one of his friends saw my trainer at a subway eating together, he and I, and damn, that damn fool told my fiancé that I was out on a lunch date. Let's just say that argument went way too damn far, and the next thing I knew, my fiancé was on the phone with my trainer telling him to cancel our workout meetings and sessions. That brunch at Subway was a typical damn snack, and my trainer was discussing meal and nutrition plans with me. Then, to put the icing on the cake, my fiancé decided that he would be my workout partner and trainer, but has yet to give me any kind of support with pushing me to become a better me, weight-wise. I love my fiancé very much, and I know that he loves me just as well well but should I tell him about the text and then address his friends when they come over to our place or should I just let him know or should I not let him know anything about the text and say, and just go the fuck off when I see his friends in person help me please and thank you in advance and like I was saying in that video we're a size not plus a size we're human not everybody is going to be the same size that is not what we were put here on earth for and it doesn't it's not written in stone it's not written in the bible that we have to be this certain size okay so like i explained to her i understand how you feel because you know I'm going and I struggle with my own weight and in my daughter Mumsy I get people that leave just nasty comments in general talking about she's overweight or you know oh you're not making anything healthy for her but like basically you don't even know what the fuck I'm making healthy for her I'm not gonna get into that but I kind of could relate to how she felt and then I'm also this type of person like you cannot body shame people like I hate to see people doing that stop talking about people's size their weight is not gonna help you in life 
it don't matter if she weigh one pound or she weigh 200 pounds or three, four, whatever her pounds, it's not going to help you in life. It's not going to better your life. So stop worrying about how much she weigh. And that's how I felt about Denise's fiance's friends. Like, dude, you need to put a handle on them. So anyway, her fiance actually, you know, I read the title of the email and the subject and I'm like, what is this? So then I opened it. And I hope I don't start crying because I surely was crying when I was reading this. But, you know what I'm saying? Um, basically, I want you guys to understand, like, it's not cool to body shame anybody. And it's really not cool to, you know, make anyone feel lesser than a person ever. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Like, I may come hard at people sometimes in real talk. But I just, sometimes you got to give people tough love. Because... They don't understand that you're trying to tell them something for their own good. And when when I say they don't understand, meaning you could just sit here with someone and have a conversation with a regular tone voice like me. And you could tell them how much you love them. And they, this is for their own good. And I'm just trying to look out for you. You can tell them this millions of times. And they're not going to get it. Some people just don't get it. And for example, take my son who's 19. I have told him numerous times on certain things that he's done and he's been doing. He doesn't take me serious, okay? He doesn't feel like, you know, oh, okay. He It's in one ear and out the other. But then when I get on some rah-rah shit with him and I kick him out or I stop fucking with him, then, you know what I'm saying, he take heed to what I'm saying. So when I come hard at people, it's more or less like, you know, some people you have to come that way because if you don't, they just don't fucking get it. You know what I'm saying? They just don't fucking get it. You tell them something to you blue in the face. They don't fucking get it. You be sitting up there, mouth dry, trying to tell them something, but they don't get it. So that is the reason why I come at you guys sometimes like that, or who has ever asked me for advice, because sometimes the advice that I may be asked is like, girl, you don't see this with your own eyes? What the fuck? Wake the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm trying to be mean. I'm just trying to like get you to understand like yo this is not cool this is not how you're supposed to do shit please don't make this mistake so i just don't really think like it's never cool to poke fun at anybody and it's never cool to make anybody feel less of a person ever like you know what i'm saying we all have our moments when we have to hurt someone's feelings but let's not do it for our own entertainment you know what i'm saying but so like i was saying i got this email and this is a real talk so here it goes. The subject line was, I am Denise's fiance from your real talk. So when I first read that, I was so confused, like, what? Then as I kept reading, I realized, all right, you can still call me Javon and also make this part of your real talk episode or video if you would like. No one has a clue that I am emailing you. My wife, Denise, I call her my wife because my love runs deep for her has been playing that real talk video with you talking about the lady named Denise who is plus size for four mornings in a row, okay? While preparing smoothies and breakfast. And one morning I took my wife out to eat breakfast to relieve her from cooking and she was so into her phone reading the comments below that video that you had made. I know that my fiance slash wife is plus size Denise. Laugh out loud. The story is spot on. What I, what I first would like to say is I love my woman the way she is. And I understand and I understood her frustrations with my friends and my actions towards me checking my friends. But what she did not know is that when I met up with my friends, I definitely went the fuck off on all of them. And one in particular, because nothing else in this world matters more to me than her and seeing her happy. And since the third morning of her playing the video and me actually listening to what you were saying, I realized that I may have made her feel a little insecure, but her weight does not bother me and never did. She was curvy and beautiful when we first met and she still is the same way to this day. I have talked with her about it and we have decided to make a health to make health a habit and get a trainer to work with to work out with us together so that we can both better ourselves and gain longevity and as far as the lunch after a workout goes 
laugh out loud. I have decided to communicate with her for us to meet up during lunch hours. Don't get me wrong. I know it seemed like I was insecure, but what it is is this. I don't want any other man to get too close to her and witness the reason I fell in love with her so much. And that's what bothered me. But you have opened my eyes to understand how exactly she may have felt about the situation. And I truly am grateful, appreciate you for sharing your perspective on the situation. I am thanking you for us. Real talk. Now, for real, I'm about to start crying again because... You know, it's so hard sometimes to find a good man or even a good woman. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes we may take them for granted by just forgetting little things or not even saying little things or telling them little things like, hey, I love you. You mean the world to me. We forget things like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes. And it's not like we're trying to take them for granted on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't think that anybody would do that. But... I'm trying to find tissue. I'm just have to use this. But I was really trying not to cry because I had already cried when I first read it. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to cry. But it was just so sincere and warming to the heart. Like when I first got that email, I was like confused. And then when I read it, I was like, oh my God. And I, I stopped and I told Tati, my daughter, about the whole email and the whole video. And then I read that to her and I just bawled out in tears. And Tati was like, you know what? Don't even write her back. Just write him back and don't even tell her. Send her an email and tell her to make sure she watches Real Talk because it was so sweet. And we both were sitting there just like, wow. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was like so, in, it, it just was so just like heartful. Like just like, I don't know the best words to describe it, but the fact that he paid that much attention, you know what I'm saying, to what, his woman was doing like, you know what I'm saying? He said she sat there for four days in a row. She's been listening to that same video for four days while making smoothies and making breakfast and reading comments. That's all she's been doing and he's been listening, okay? And so he realized that that was her. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes men don't even pay attention that much. But for him to even take the time to email me, I was just like, wow. I couldn't believe that he emailed me. And just to read what he said about he loved her, that's his woman. And also the reason why he felt like he didn't want Denise to go out to lunch with another man, even though that was her trainer. It was because he didn't want that man to witness the real reason why he fell in love with her because of the person she is. You know what I'm saying? He said he's not insecure, but he don't want to see anybody basically witnessing why he fell in love with her. He probably fight to the death for that woman. And that's what I'm talking about. So he did go off on his friends and that was a relief to hear because I'm so happy that he went off on his friends and let them know basically like, listen, you gonna stop saying whatever you got to say about my girl, unless it ain't positive, then don't speak about her, okay? And I and I feel that like this is what men really need to do. Like this is a knight in shining armor. Like seriously, like I couldn't believe what I was reading, and it made me happy. Like you know what? There's still hope for a lot of us women out there. Like you know what? There still are good men. You know, sometimes we may pick a bad apple or two or three or four. Okay, but there still are good people in general out there. For everyone you know what I mean and I hope that Denise I hope that you are watching this email and are able to just feel better about things and also girl congratulations on you and your fiance going to work out together and eating healthy together because that's what's up a lot of times it takes togetherness for us to do shit to you know what i'm saying for us to be able to accomplish it that's just like with me i used to go to the gym all the time with my husband and 
I, I felt even though we were like neck and neck on the bikes or whatever exercise equipment, I knew he was in the gym somewhere and we went together. So we did it as teamwork. And if I needed help with anything or if I had a question about a piece of equipment, I didn't have to go ask one of the people that worked at the gym. I can go ask him because he knew a lot about working out and how to lose way and how to tone up so you know what I'm saying he was my mentor and he was what made me feel comfortable at the gym and we did it together and I lost so much weight so you know now it's a little bit of struggle for me because I have to do this alone you know I go out in the morning and I'll either take one of my dogs and I'll go walking I really don't want to set foot in the gym because that's just not me but hey sometimes when you do things together that's what makes life a lot easier. You're able to accomplish it. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're in a relationship together, you definitely want to work as a unity. So I was so happy to get that email. You know what I mean? I was really, really so pleased. Like, you know, like, wow, he noticed his woman and he really didn't mean to make her feel some, some type of way. So I don't really want to spend too much time on this, but you know what I'm saying? I'm really happy about the turnout on this one. And Hopefully I get more of these because it's always nice to be able to report back to you guys of nice situations, nice things like this that happen. Because, girl, I mean, I don't mind spilling the tea and telling y'all like it is like, bitch, you need to do this with yourself. But it's nice that somebody could relate and be able to say, hey, I've changed my ways and I made this woman feel some type of way now versus then. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So... Now we are going to get on to the next one because this one is a good one. And you know what? I love pictures and I love to see my subscribers send me pictures of themselves so that way I can relate to them. Um, it just makes it a lot easier. And oh my God, all of you guys that send me emails are just so beautiful, beautiful people. You can always look at a person's smile and just tell that they just like a really good hearted person. So I don't know. I think in my older age that I have gotten a little bit more friendlier. You know, my kids have said that I'm a nice person, a more nicer person. And I would hope to be. But I just feel like I'm able to just, like, weed out certain people a lot more now. You know? Um, and it is what it is. So let's get on to the next real talk. Okay. Okay, you guys. Hello, April. I'm an East African girl who lives in the UK. Recently, around two months ago, I met an, I met an Afghan boy from a Muslim dating site. Now, I am from East Africa, but I am not Somalian. I am Ugandan. Therefore, we tend to not be Muslim. My reasons for going on a Muslim dating website was because I was tired of being on Tinder, mainly white guys on there who fetish ethnic girls. The guy I met on the Muslim dating site seemed legit and even mentioned religious marriage after three weeks. Now typically I would not have taken that seriously, but with failing nursing school I was in a depressive state and I wanted attention. Me and the guy met in central London near a park. He was a gentleman. It was raining and he held the umbrella for both of us. We sat down and really hit it off. We then went in a taxi to a vegan restaurant, which is very expensive. He paid the bill in full. I was very impressed as we are students. We don't have much money, us both being 19 years old. We went to the Princess Diana monument and he held my hand and made me feel like a princess. Then he went home, Southampton, a different city in the UK. I stayed in London and went home. After two days, I received a call telling me the guy is bisexual. My friends have told me that he isn't bisexual and that he is down on the down low and that a low and that a low of African and Asian guys use the bisexual thing to give hope to their parents that they can change. The emotions took over and I listened to my friends. However, I regret my actions. Maybe I should have still given him a chance. Attached are some photos. Okay. So, she attached some photos of herself and him. So, there was just one picture of him and her, which they were under this huge umbrella. I'm not going to show you guys the picture. All right. But then, there's also a picture of him and he has some guy on his lap 
stroking his motherfucking hair. You know what I mean? And they smile and they all cuddle up, okay? I can tell that's relationship goals, all right? So basically, she never named herself, so we're going to just name her um, London. And we're just going to name him, oh God. I don't know. I have no clue what we're going to name him, but um, for real, we're just going to name him Sneaky, okay? So London, basically, they had lunch. They're 19 years old. They had lunch with each other. They met on a Muslim dating website, okay? Because she got tired of meeting guys through Tinder. Mainly the guys that she met through Tinder were white, were white guys who had a fetish for ethnic women. Okay, I get it. So that's the reason why she went to the Muslim dating site. She's Ugandan. They're not Muslim. But, you know, she just figured she would give it a try. So she met Sneaky on this, web, this this dating site, and they met up in the park on a rainy day, basically, and he held the umbrella for them, he was nice, he talked about marriage after three weeks of, you know, talking back and forth with her, you know, he paid for lunch at an expensive vegan restaurant, etc., etc., but however, London is getting messages, a phone call, actually, you know what I'm saying? She received a call, a phone call, telling her that Sneaky is actually bisexual. She said her friends have been telling her, her actual friends, London's actual friends have been telling her that he isn't bisexual, that he's on the, da the down low, and that African and Asian guys use the bisexual thing to give hope to their parents that they will actually change and go straight. So she said, I should have listened to my friends. Now I regret my actions. You know, I, I, I don't really know why she regrets her actions because that was the end of the email. But she sent me a picture. I'm not really sure where she got this picture from of him all booed the fuck up, like booed up. They both have full facial beards and mustaches and they are cuddling under a, well, one of them is under a blanket, and the other is on top of him, and they're cuddling. So, she, either way, London, if you don't listen to your friends, and you listen to the phone call that he's bisexual, or if you listen to your friends that he's on the down low, he's really just gay and not bisexual, then either way, you have proof. You have the receipts. You got the picture. He's with another man, okay? So, therefore, I wouldn't give a fuck if he was bisexual, like meaning he liked women and men, or if he was gay. You like the same sex as you are, okay? And therefore, I can't fuck with you. Like, I don't really see a future in that. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, he just, he's, he did, he's just, he lied. He lied from the very beginning, meaning he led you on to think or to allow you to make you think that you guys are going to have something. You know what I'm saying? He came to you through messages, through phone calls, like, hey, I want to get married, religion, talking all of this goody good shit that men normally do talk or tell women. And he got you to believe in that shit, you know, got you in your feelings about him. So in my, my honest opinion, he was deceitful. That's what his name really needs to be, deceitful, because he led you on. He had you believe that he was straight and that what he wanted was you. And in reality, if he is straight gay, then he don't want nothing you got between your legs, okay? And if he is bisexual, then sweetheart, he may want you and he may want the boo that he hugged up with. However, either way you look at it, he lied to you. He deceived, he deceived you. You know what I'm saying? And that's a wrong path to take, especially when you're trying to build a relationship with somebody. Like, listen, I know we all deceive each other or we all deceive people when we go out and we first meet them. You know what I'm saying? Meaning I can go somewhere and I can go on a date today. Okay. I'm going to go just looking just like this. The way you guys see me right now, this is how I'm going to go looking. Okay. The only thing that I you, you don't see on me right now is my little waist trainer. I might even put that on. I may just put that on. So here I am. I'm going on my date, okay? I'm on my date with this guy. I got my hair on. I got my eyebrows on. And I got my little fake stomach on because it's it's making me look like I'm flatter. Okay, I'm pretty sure he knows it's all makeup. He might not know that this is hair. This is not mine. 
he may not think that he might not even know that my waist is not that small so in a way I might be deceiving him okay but it's not to be malicious it's not to lie to you it's because this is a different type of deceit and then again it may not be a motherfucking deceit okay this is just what the fuck I do but you may be lucky enough to see me in my natural state like without my hair without my makeup it all depends dude if you act right that means you might wake the fuck up next to me somewhere it not in my home but somewhere else but you know that's a different type of deceit because I've heard men say like you know well when we take women out on dates and shit you know they deceiving us because they got this fake hair on they got these fake lashes on these fake nails they doing all this and by the end of the day if we get them and we wake up next and they totally different looking person that's a totally difference you are telling someone that you want to marry them within three weeks let me tell you something if any man was to tell me that they want to marry me in three weeks I'm leaving the fucking relationship I'm, I'm out you know why because I find that to be a crock of bullshit some plain outright bullshit I would never believe that shit and there might be some men who truly do mean that but honestly I'm really not the one to fall for that shit so if you are really being sincere about wanting to marry me in three weeks and I ditch you then I guess I missed out okay However, when I feel like when men are talking about after they have met you and they've been with you for a couple of weeks and they're talking about, oh, I want you to meet my mother. Oh, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to spoil you. We're going to get married. I'll be just saying to myself, or I'll be looking at them or I say, boy, please stop trying to run game on me. You know what I'm saying? For a person that has been around for quite some time now, 43 years. I, I'm, I think I'm pretty good with peeping game. You know what I'm saying? So when dudes say shit like that, they just telling you what the fuck they think you want to hear. But in reality, we don't want to hear no bullshit. We want to hear the truth. So either way, honey, he's a liar and he's deceitful, okay? Now, I don't know if he's bisexual. I don't know if he's just, just gay. Either way, I do know this. He's a motherfucking liar, okay? And once a motherfucking liar, I'm not saying always a motherfucking liar, but... He's a motherfucking liar. Now, where did you get the picture from is what I'm trying to figure out. And who called you and told you that he's bisexual? Like, did you even ask him? You regret listening to your friends. Okay, so the reason why I'm trying to figure out is why do you regret listening to your friends? And what did she say? Um, however, I regret my actions. Maybe I should have still given him a chance. Okay, so... The emotions took over and I listened to my friends. So the emotions took over and she listened to her friends, meaning her friends that told him, told her he ain't bisexual, he's straight gay. She listened to them and basically she cut him off. And now she's saying, however, I regret my actions. Maybe I should have still given him a chance. Okay. Bitch, for what? London, for what? I got this picture of him booed the fuck out with another man so what fucking chances you about to give the nigga because he booed the fuck up he cuffed up like y'all call it he booed the fuck up with a man okay what chance are you going to give him that nigga don't want no chance bitch he he girl he is deceiving you okay listen the one thing that you really need to realize sweetheart is when a man is is pulling game you at school you need to put your face in them books girl and get to get to studying and shit because your friends are right whether they're 100% right or 50% right dude like men okay dude like dick he like what he got okay what he got swinging in between his legs he like that he like his partner to have that and if he like pussy and dick at the same time then hey to each his own but either way your friends were correct he swing both ways or he swing one way. Either way, what chance are you trying to give nigga? Because if he like men and he like women, I'm sorry, but me, honestly, with today's world and all these different diseases going on and all these crazy motherfuckers, I'm not trying to chance catching nothing from nobody, okay? I'm not trying to have you cheating on me with a dude and then coming back to me like, I'm not trying to be ridiculed. I'm not trying to be embarrassed, okay? I'm not trying to have to fucking go to jail because when I say that, meaning, nigga, I will fuck you up so bad that I might have to go to jail behind the shit. So I'm not trying to lose my self-respect over some dude who either 
like dick only or dick and pussy, okay? That's just two things that I'm just really not trying to fuck with, okay? However, there's no chance you need to give him. He already done lied to you. Wherever you got these pictures from, it's a receipt, okay? So why do you regret your friends? They're your friends and they were looking out for you, okay? So I guess it's more or less like I should have listened to whoever called me and, and just went with he was bisexual because then I could have went with that. And maybe he would become straight. Bitch, no. Okay, you can't change nobody if that's what they want to be. Nine times out of ten, if he is bisexual and he like both sexes, nine times out of ten, if he was to change, the only thing he's going to change is he's going to go straight to being gay. Okay, and I have, I, I mean, like, I, 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 that's all I know of, especially with men. Like, they like to, if they like both sexes and they decide they want to be with one of them the most, they're going to be with the man the most. They're, they're bisexual mainly because they use the women for their personal appearance, for their public appearance, you know what I'm saying? For everybody to feel like they're straight, you know what I mean? They don't want that. They're gay to be known by their family and friends. So that's why they're bisexual. This is their public appearance. The woman is their public appearance most of the time, okay? However, sweetheart, the only thing that you're doing wrong now is trying to give him a chance. He looked pretty damn happy on that couch with the next man, okay? They both looking into each other's eyes, okay? Glazing into each other's eyes. The only fucking thing they missing is the motherfucking sunset, okay? They missing a blanket outside, and watching the sunset because they booed the fuck up smiling stroking each other playing in one another's hair and i'm not exaggerating this is the picture that i'm looking at and they're looking and gazing into each other's eyes with a smile so like i said bitch the only thing that they miss it is the motherfucking sunset okay sweetheart what you need to do is run off into the sunset and worry about yourself and your books and stop worrying about this confused ass boy okay who done already deceived you and stay the fuck off of those dating websites because those be the worst ones there be a bunch of fucking weirdos and liars on there or users okay so like i said bitch run off into the sunset and stay the fuck away from him bottom line let london know what the fuck y'all think about that shit like i mean shit i know i want to be in a relationship too but i ain't about to settle for no bisexual man hell to the no Let's just move on to the next road talk, you guys. Service. Now, when I got this one, I was like, I really want to read this. I mean, I couldn't wait because I love doing relationship advice, but it's cool, too. I like to hear about other kind of drama as well. So, yes, let's get into this one. Hey, April, I love your channel and your family. Thanks for making me laugh each Wednesday. Names have been changed. I'll call myself Sky. The other two will be Moon and Sun. We are all in our early 50s. I am a widow. Moon is divorced and Sun is married. I joined a new church a year ago. I really love my church family and the teaching. I did not know not one person, I did not know not one person when I started going to my new church. I make it a point to speak to everyone I come in contact with and I have met a lot of new people. Moon started to come visit, excuse me, Moon started to come sit by me at church each Sunday and we would chat before service. Moon seemed cool. We decided to go out to eat breakfast one Saturday morning so we could just have time to talk and get to know one another and invite another young lady um let's see and we invited another young lady let's call her storm i picked up storm and we were to meet moon at the restaurant when we get to the restaurant moon has invited her best friend since childhood which is son they said they just happened to run into one another hmm okay so we invited son to eat with us as well Fast forward now, Moon and Sun sit by me every Sunday at church, but Sun has taken over the friendship. Sun will come late and make Moon move so she can sit next to me. Now mind you, I had met Moon first. Moon was my friend first. Moon was the one that was always sitting next to me at church. I met Sun through Moon when we went out to lunch, okay? Now, what is this, high school? I don't care for Sun. She is bossy and controls Moon. Last Sunday, Sun asked me 
to move my Bible from the seat next to me, which I put there on purpose to get space from them being all up on me. Son and her husband sit next to me. Like, who does that? She should have sat next to me, not her husband. Oh, excuse me. Son had her husband sit next to me. Yeah, like, who does that? She should have sat next to me, not her husband. At any rate, I don't want son for a friend. I'm trying to shake them off. But since these are church folks, I am not trying to start tension when I have to see them each Sunday. April, what do I have to do to shake these ladies off of me without starting any mess in the church? This Sunday, I'm going to move where I sit, but they have come sit, but they ha may come sit by me thinking I am trying a new seat. So do I address this with Moon? I need your help. Thank you in advance. God bless you and your family. Sky, God is faithful. So basically, and, and, and Sky looks so familiar. I swear I've seen her somewhere before. Oh my God. Or either she looks like one of my relatives because she just looks so familiar with her pretty self. Um, it's just, okay, so basically Sky, I'm going to break it down. Sky has been going to a new church. She has, you know, been a part of this new church now for a year. And she has made some friends. She's made a friend named Moon, okay? And um, Moon and her, Moon and Sky decide to, you know, go on a breakfast date. You know, have breakfast, do the girl thing. That's what you do. And so Moon brings her friend Sun. Her friend Sun has been best friends with her since day one, since, you know, school. They say they just met up with each other. They just ran into each other. But also, Sky has her friend Storm with her. Whatever, they all have a good lunch. Now, mind you, remember, this is really about Sky and Moon. Sky and Moon have been friends. They, 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 Moon has come over to Sky and has been, you know, basically welcoming her to the church. She sat next to her in church. She, you know, she's, you know, made her presence aware. She's, you know, basically like introduced herself to Sky because Sky is new to this church, you know, and they sit next to one another every Sunday. Now, ever since that lunch date with Sky, Moon, Sun, and Star, Sun has now more or less taken over the friendship. She coming to sit over there with Moon and Sky too. Sun like basically, I want to be a part of this shit. But on top of that, Sun is really bossy. She bossy. The bitch is motherfucking bossy, okay? And Sky don't like that shit. She doesn't like it. She doesn't like to see her friend Moon, her new friend Moon, getting bossed around by Sun. And on top of that, she just trying to take over. You know what I'm saying? So basically, Sky is trying to weed herself away from these church people and just be about her own business. Recently, you know, Sky sitting in church where she normally sit at. And here comes Sun with her husband. Sun has her husband sit right next to Sky. So basically, it's Sun, Sun's husband, and Sky. I don't really know where Moon was at if she was on the other side of her, but Sky felt really uncomfortable with her husband, with another lady's husband sitting next to her. Now, I could totally relate to that because if you're supposed to be my so called church friend, even though I really don't care for you that much, Sun. Why would you have your husband sit in the between us? What you trying to get some kind of little holier than thou kind of thing going on? You know what I'm saying? Either way, she not really trying to be starting no shit, mean and sky. She don't want to sit with them anymore. You know, like that movie Mean Girls, you can't sit with us. She don't want to sit with them anymore. She don't want none of the drama. She don't want to be a part of it. She don't really like Sun for the person she is because, like I said, she bossy. She don't like to see her friend Moon getting bossed around by Sun. And they all in their 50s. But Moon apparently don't seem to mind because she ain't saying shit about it. So she just basically wants to see how does she get rid of these people these church women without being messy, you know what I'm saying? And starting any church altercations and shit. That's funny because you know something? I'ma tell you what. That's the that that's not one of the reasons why I don't go to church. I don't I don't go to church anymore, okay? Because everybody's beliefs are different and I told you guys that before. And a lot of reasons why I don't go is because I don't like to see people jumping around with that Holy Ghost stuff. That that shit to me is not real, okay? It's fake. It's fake. It's fake. I have watched many shows like one being 2020 how they get people 
that work part of the church to jump around and do that so that way you get more money to the church so that's just fake to me it's just fake and I'm really not trying to see that anymore and on top of that I hate the fact that they got like six seven collections passing around like okay I came here with some money now I'm leaving out this motherfucker broke on top of that growing up as a kid you like I told you guys these women that come to church I don't know if y'all going to church or are y'all going to walk the runway because this is not a fashion show bitch but they would come all dolled the fuck out and then they would talk about the other people that were homeless that were coming to the church to listen to the to the lord you know what i'm saying listen to the, the, the word of the lord you know listen to the word of god or what, whatever you want to call it they would always just be fucking talking about these homeless people that would come in there and sit by themselves you know there was only one guy that will always come in every Sunday and he would listen to the word you know what I mean he wouldn't bother nobody but you got these feathery hat wearing women because you know they got these big ass fucking hats on with feathers and shit look like they about to have a they about to take fight like a chicken coop fight you know what I'm saying like one of those chicken fights you see feathers all lined the fuck up big ass hats in a fucking row feathers and shit peacock feathers on I'm like damn bitch did you just kill a bird what the fuck we got going on here we got all these just like come on chill and this was every Sunday so I hate hypocrites I hate people that sit there so you in church but you talking about people that's in the motherfucking church and that's how that's the reason why I don't go to church because some of these these people that go to church they hypocrites you know what I'm saying they straight up are hypocrites they they they'll 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 claim to be holier than thou on a motherfucking Sunday and then the other days of the week them bitches ain't nothing but thoughts okay or they the devil themselves so with a lot of people that try to come around me and be like, bless you, God bless you, sister. Want to come to my church? Back off, okay? Because, like, on some real shit, don't come at me like that. Because I just feel like those that are real aggressive like that sometimes are just so fake. Just fake. But I could understand what she's talking about is she don't want to get it. She don't want to start no church drama and be messy. Because, you know what? Even though it's church... They got clicks at church. You know what I'm saying? Like when I say a click, like we sitting here. This our this our pew. This where we sit. You know what I'm saying? You know not to come over here and sit in our pew. You know not to come over here because this us. This our click. And then we got the non feather wearing hat click over there. And then we got the people that's just like myself who is just there for one thing only, and that's it. I'm not there to make friends with you. I'm not there to hang out with you. I'm there to listen to the word and I'm going to go home from here. I'm not here to socialize. And that's how I would treat church. I'm not coming here to make friends. I'm not coming here to make a date. I'm not coming here to find a husband. I'm coming here for one thing and one thing only. So really, I'm not about to introduce myself to everybody. And I know that might seem like kind of shallow, but I'm... I just try to stay out of drama. So that's another click that we got. We got the people like me that just keep to themselves and we're here for one thing. We got those who think they're better than others. Then we got the ones over here who feel like, okay, the ones who feel like they're better than each other or everybody else is just some bullshit. These are the haters. So, you know what I'm saying? Each church got their click. And even though it's church, them motherfuckers got clicks too, okay? And there'll be drama at the church place. Trust me when I tell you guys, okay? And that really sucks because this is the house of the Lord and we're here for one thing and one thing only. That's why I don't go, okay? Now, she already said she wanted to change her seat, but she feels like this. Like, if she changes her seat, Fucking moon and sun are going to fucking find their way over t over there and feel like, oh, well, we're going to go sit over there because she probably just want to try a new seat out. This is how you get them to not sit nowhere the fuck near you. Sit in the row where there's a bunch of people at already and they ain't got nowhere to squeeze the fuck in. Okay? That's all you got to do to just alleviate them coming anywhere near your ass. You wait and you come in. You didn't got to come in late, but you sit where there are... Enough people to where neither one of those two females, those churchgoers, or those hypocrites are going to be able to sit next to you. You know what I'm saying? And then after church is over, sweetheart, you pick up your Bible or whatever you came up in there with and you say your goodbyes or as you leaving. Like, sweetheart, don't stop and have a fucking conversation with nobody. 
take your stuff and go. And sometimes we have to be like that because when sometimes it seems like when we've been a little bit too friendly, then other people start to feel like, oh, well, she's opening up. I'm going to go over here with her and I'm going to go pour my burdens on her and I'm going to go get to know her so we can be cool. And then she's going to be part of our clique because that's what the fuck Sun is doing. So you already had a nice friendship with Moon, which is so-called Sun's friend. OK, but now that Sun has been invited to lunch, now she got herself over there and also her husband. Next thing you know, she's going to probably have her one of her kids or somebody else in that same role with you guys all sitting there. And you're going to be the one that's like, I'm just going to go find me another church. So what you do is you find you a role of where there are enough people to where neither one of the females can have a seat next to you. Okay? Even if them bitches is sitting behind you, that's better than sitting next to you. And after church is over, after the word is over... Don't stick around and don't stick around having conversations with anybody. You hurry, get the fuck up, and keep it pushing, okay? Listen, I tell you guys this all the time. Like, that's why I'm, I don't know if it's because that's why I'm probably like a very introverted person because I don't have any friends it's because of reasons like this. And I just try to stay away from a lot of drama, whether it be church drama, school drama, YouTube drama, any type of drama. I just try to stay away from it. I try to steer clear of it because you know why? I know the type of person that I am. Like I have, I have changed my ways a lot, really. I have become a way nicer person. Like I said, my kids even say that, like, for real, I used to be like a total bitch, but I have changed my ways completely, and I really would like to stay that way, you know what I'm saying? I really find it a lot easier being a much nicer person, and so I kind of try to steer away from a lot of people because I know that there is a lot of shady shit sometimes behind a lot of people, and then when I'm approached by certain type of people, it just kind of like throws a red flag up for me, and it's like, okay, you know what? I really can't fuck with you because I know what type of person you are and I know what type of person I am or I can be and I think it's for the best interest of the both of us for me and you not to be cool with each other you know what I mean um and that's why I just keep myself out of certain situations and that's probably a lot of the reasons why I'm so introverted and I keep to myself is because of that you know what I'm saying I feel like the less friends that I have the less drama that I have in my life you know what I'm saying like I don't like to argue with my friends because they're friends that's one thing that I don't like to do we're friends but I feel like you know sometimes even though we want to say certain things to people and we may say it as sweet as pie and as nice as anything or any way that we could you know what I mean they're gonna take it one way and that's the way they're gonna take it regardless so sometimes just to avoid a person and avoid avoid having to have that verbal contact with them is just to alleviate yourself and wean yourself out of that group or away from them. So that's the reason why I say find yourself a pew, that's what they call it, where there are enough people to where sun and moon's ass can't sit next to you. That's just the easiest way to do it. And they'll get the hint. They may not get the hint the first time. But trust and believe, if you kick that shit out at least three times, they'll get the hint like, oh, okay, she don't really want to sit with us. And they'll leave you the fuck alone. Because people don't like to be ignored. And people don't like to be shunned. And after a while, a person will get it. Like, hopefully, like, okay, she not really into me. She not really feeling me. I'm going to just leave her alone. Bottom line. So on that note, what are you doing? Yeah, you want to play. Oh, you want to play? So on that note, me and Luna are going to go. And we hope you guys enjoyed the Real Talk. Now remember, the next Real Talk for next week, I'll have the same thing on, okay? Because I'm about to record it right now. Right, aren't we? So, yeah, don't think that I wore the same clothes again because, no, no. I have to go to New York. So I hope that I get to see some of you guys there uh, when I go. If you are going to the RPG show event in Manhattan on this coming Sunday, then definitely go ahead and leave your comments below. And Luna says bye. She's so tiny. Look at her. She's so little. Luna says bye. She's like a little rat. Um, and yeah, we love you guys. And leave all your opinions below. And we'll see you guys in a soon to come video. Right? Little Luna. Little Luna. You're so cute.
you look like a little rabbit. Like not a rabbit, like a little like a little bat. You have these little batty ears and you have your belly. Your belly's right there. Your belly. You do have a belly. Huh?